Welcome to another episode of Programming Socks. So I was reading some articles this morning at the gym and I came across this article here on Malwarebytes blog, right? And as you can see from the footage here that I'm putting on the screen, this individual was playing Call of Duty World War II and in the middle of the game, suddenly bro got hacked. <laughs> Just to clarify what happened or what occurred in this footage, somebody executed code on his system. It appears they open command prompts. I don't know based on this footage that they that if he changed his wallpaper or not. Listen, nowadays y'all be having memes and goofy pictures as your phone and desktop background. So it's hard to make judgment here. But this is besides the point. This is an official game on the Microsoft Store by a multi-billion dollar company developed and published. This isn't some mod you downloaded or some community maintained thing. The, this issue has been relevant since the game came out. When you're in a game with somebody else, there's a vulnerability specifically that allows someone to essentially intercept and manipulate the network data. Essentially, this allows somebody to inject their own code back to the server and another player system parses that data and then they're, they're cooked. And then you end up with uh, someone opening up Notepad. This is called RCE or remote code execution. This is pretty popular, believe it or not. If you ever played Minecraft, this is a huge thing. Overwatch, I've seen people exploit this too. I saw somebody do this with Apex Legends as well, but I think it got patched pretty quickly. But it's not always like what you saw in this clip earlier. Usually people will use this to gain an advantage over others in games, not to compromise someone else's system, though clearly it's possible. Yeah, ha ha, ha ha, ha ha. Someone sending me funny messages on mo on notepad in the middle of the game. Ha ha, ha ha, changing my wallpaper to an oiled up black guy. Ha ha ha, ha. Uh, yeah, but listen, funny, but the fact someone is able to execute code on your system and it's not you, it's a big problem. To understand how this could occur, I'll use an easy example because I mentioned it before. Minecraft. Minecraft, the client and the server consistently communicates back and forth. That's how multiplayer works, playing multiplayer, not rocket science. However, that communication and what exactly is sent back and forth, it's worth recognizing that the network data is usually, I don't know, things like world position, updates, actions like you jumping and swinging a sword, block placements and all of that, right? That data is structured in a specific way. If someone intercepts that network data, they could change it instantly. So if the Minecraft server is asking, yo, where is this player located on the map? What are their coordinates, right? If it's asking your client that, right? Your game that, your computer that, your client will usually supposed to respond to the server with your actual in-game coordinates. But if someone is tampering with that data through their hacked client or their Minecraft client, whatever, right? And they intercepted and injected some network code, they can completely modify their responded coordinates. Someone can literally teleport across the map and the server, since the client told it, that's where it's located at across the map where it teleported to, it just accepts it as the truth. Oh, you across the map this whole time? My bad. You was uh, my bad. I, I, the server was lagging. You know, I just, this is the information you're telling me. Sorry, I was lagging. Now, as far as I'm concerned with that example, right? I don't really follow Minecraft hacking or clients. It's just, just easy. I don't even play the game like that because it, this is how things are in most cases, though. But as far as I'm concerned with my example, most modern Minecraft servers and versions of the game actually do validate and sanitize information sent by the client, but some servers don't. Some servers don't because it's on an older version of the game. Like I know version 1.8.9, I think, people prefer playing PVP on because the combat is just different and objectively better, right? I know in new versions of the Minecraft, they changed how combat is. I think there's like some cooldown thing now. I, I don't remember, I don't remember, but those older versions of Minecraft, obviously they're older, they have exploits, that are, or vulnerabilities rather, that are patched in newer versions. And as a result, older servers have to use an anti-cheat or some sort of analysis over someone's behavior. I, I'm getting off topic, right? I, I digress. But it seems somebody did something like that or exactly that. They modified some network data and the server, the Call of Duty server just accepted it or whatever, they didn't verify or sanitize it. And you know, shame on Microsoft or Activision for that. That is insane. 
It's 2025 and you're not sanitizing client information to your network? That's like, that's like cybersecurity. <laughs> that's like cybersecurity 101. Yo, if you ever, yo, you even, if you ever made a website where people were allowed to type in information and submit things to your to your site, right? You learn to sanitize and protect what is inputted. You learn at the start to never trust a client. Never. Always expect the worst out of anyone who visits your website or page or uses your software. Always expect the worst. You learn that at the very beginning. And for what reason would a multi-billion dollar game with a massive player base allow unsanitized network data from other players to reach and execute on your system. Man, this isn't some game or backend that one or two people put together. You got engineers all up in the studio. Rather, scratch that. Let me ask a better question because I think I'm being insensitive. I, I, I think I'm passing too much judgment. I don't know these people, okay? And their skill sets who work at Microsoft or Activision or both, right? People make mistakes and such is the nature of development. You sometimes leave vulnerabilities in your code and people exploit that. So that's nobody's perfect, right? So here's my bigger question, okay? Why would any kind of network data, especially from a multiplayer game, have the power to trigger a system level code execution. There is absolutely no legitimate reason for that. Why? It's one thing to exploit a game mechanic, you know, like I mentioned to teleport or manipulate your player or other players, right? So that's one thing, it's called cheating in a video game. There's, there's that, right? But it's completely another thing to entirely hijack a game's network layer to run raw, arbitrary code on someone else's computer. That's not just bad design, that's negligence. Also, I could give the benefit of the doubt to why this was allowed, but I don't know this game. You know, like some games, they allow modding support or plugins or custom content. So they allow this to function properly by basically executing something remote on someone else's system. Uh, that makes a lot of sense if you understand the foundation to how some game modding can work. But let's say that was the case. If you just blindly deserialize and unsanitize network data to your game memory, then that could lead to memory corruption. And then there goes the malicious code execution. This is where the RCE comes in. and. The fact that that made it to the release is questionable, you know what I'm saying? Like some are saying that it's the game pass that allowed that to happen. And this exploit is only possible if you get the game from the Microsoft store. That's what people are saying. I don't know. This is sloppy. This is sloppy architecture. It existed for weeks now. Nobody's doing anything about it. Yo, I I'm glad Malwarebytes made a blog about it, but People don't feel like running anti-malware in 2025 because my brain is the best antivirus, right? Even, I, you know, it, it's funny people say that, right? I even made a whole video about that, but like, it's funny people say that, even though you can clearly see, like, I, I, I don't know, it's like, I, it's right in front of you. You can clearly see simply by casually playing a normal game. Someone could just hack you because you, 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 you just played a, a game published and developed by a major corporation. How, how are you supposed to know this? Your brain had no way of knowing this. If your brain is really the best antivirus in this case, it, it had no possible way of knowing this can happen to you. You're just casually playing Call of Duty. You're not doing anything spooky or sus. You just wanna play a game and you get hacked. This is where that argument, my brain is the best antivirus statement objectively doesn't work. And trust me, you know, this may be like, oh, well, this is just one specific spooky situation. I go, Yo, this happens every day. You just aren't aware of it. And it's not being reported. Not always RCE to this extent, but we've seen historically, if you just do your research, browsers having vulnerabilities, random games having vulnerabilities that create malware too. We've seen software that is commonly used and raved about how safe and awesome it is and everyone's using it have vulnerabilities. I use Minecraft. I've, I've heard stories. I've read articles about Minecraft clients, Minecraft mod packs, 
just casually just having just something going on in it. You know what I'm saying? In in 2025, Windows Defender tends to be mostly okay. It wasn't always like that in the past, but this seems to be okay now. But this is why, not trying to overhype because I'm using their blog for this video, but this is why I also have malware bytes whenever I use something that's Windows related. I'm not a Windows user, not to play into the meme because Linux users always have to tell everyone that they're on Linux, but I'm, I'm on Linux and I have been for coming up to a decade soon. But if I ever install like a Windows virtual machine, malware bytes is like the first thing is essential for me. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I keep the I keep the free version of that and Windows Defender on at the same time. I just I just can't trust anything. Like seeing stuff like this is just crazy. It's unacceptable. It's just purely unacceptable. I, I, I just, it's for weeks now, like the game is still on the Microsoft store as I'm making this video. Like I don't, for like, they, they don't care, bro. They don't care. And people are still going to buy the game. People are not even going to recognize it happening. People don't care, bro. It is what it is. I'm out.